With the help of Hashem, we are learning Sanhedrin Daf Nun Tes. We left off on Daf Nun Ches Amid Beis. We are continuing the sugya now of the mitzvahs of Bnei Noyach. And as we'll see today, our sugya is following the opinion that even the Avois and the Shvatim had a din halachically of Bnei Noyach up until the giving of the Torah. And the two things that we are learning about that a goy may not do, number one, we began goy sheshavas chayev misa. That's where we began to discuss yesterday and daf nun beis. And as we'll continue today, goy sheoisik batreira is also chayev misa in both cases. Just to make it clear, b'chlal when it comes to the shava mitzvahs bnei noyach, first of all, there are no shiurim by goyim. So by yidin to be punished in a based in, there has to be a violation of a minimum amount. Even following Shitas Rabbi Yechen on that Chatsi Shir is Osun Min HaToyro, forget about Reish Lakish that says that Chatsi Shir is not even Osun Min HaToyro, but there's no punishment. By Bnei, by Bnei Noyach, any violation, they are punished, and the punishment is always death, and the death is always Besayef. Now, many Chazals, like we're learning today, Goisha Shavas, Chayev Misa, Goisha Oisig Batoyro, Chayev Misa, according to the Rambam and many others, it doesn't mean that they are chayev misa like they would that they are chayev for geneva for avodah zara in a based in besayef no it means chayev misa day shamayim now we're gonna i just want to before we go on with the intro because we already read a few lines of goy shashavas chayev misa the rambam and then we, we left off yesterday by learning not that if he keeps shabbos on the shabbos day if he keeps shabbos on a monday now again like we said it doesn't mean that a goy is not allowed to rest Human beings, we need to work, we need to rest. We have to get the right proportion. The Rambam, I just want to read an Rambam in Mehilchas Malachim, where he puts together at the end all of the seven categories. Sheva mitzvahs doesn't mean mitzvahs. It means seven categories. Actually, we have over here, we have in Chulin, it's 30 details. It's maybe 100 details because they also were makabal on themselves. Many, many more. For example, we just learned yesterday that the Goyim took upon themselves that married women should cover their hair. It was one of the things that they took upon themselves, and that's a sirach, it's an extension of Arroyas. So the Ramam writes again, Hilchus Malachim Perik Yud Halachetes, listen to these words, that Kloloi Shaldavar, this is regarding the Ramam's, regarding Agoi Sheshavas, Chayiv Misa, whichever day of the week it is, Ein Manichin Oison, Lechadesh Das. Goyim are not allowed to make up a new religion. And even a specific, Velasois mitzvah la'atzman midaton. Either the Rambam says they should become a ger tzedek and be makabal all the mitzvahs of God, or yamayit be toirasoi. Toirasoi means in the Shava mitzvahs, velo yoise, velo yigra. The im osak batoira, or if they keep Shabbos, oi, if they were machadesh a mitzvah, so the Rambam writes, makin oisoi ve onshin oisoi. Very clear. First of all, Chayev Misa here means by God. It does also mean that we have a responsibility to try to prevent them when we have the power through Makinoisai, Vaanshanoisai, and we let them know that, that, that God, they forfeited their lives. So there's an interesting link between Shabbos and religion. That is the emphasis of the Rambam. Anyway, so we're gonna, just going to quickly read over that din. We did also learn in Chagiga not that long ago that Ein Moisrin Divrei Torah La'akum. And we'll explain these are two different dinim. One is that a Yid is not allowed to teach them. That's in Chagiga Yud Gimel. Here we're learning that the Goy cannot be Oisik Batoira. Obviously, he's obligated to be Oisik in the Torah of the Shava Mitzvahs. But as the Gemara is going to point out over here, now we're get, the whole Daf Nun Tes. It's a very important daf. We're going to learn two principles based on the following. There are certain mitzvahs that are written in the Torah prior to Matan Torah. The Torah is recording how mitzvahs were given to mankind. You have Fruravu, you have um, Mila. We'll see whether Mila Lachatchila was meant for everyone or not. You have Gid Hanasha. You have certain records of mitzvahs. And some of them. And then you have the Sheva Mitzvah's B'nai Noyach, which is a whole sugya, how it's hinted in Psukim that God told uh, to Adam, as we learned in yesterday's daft, that the Arroyas, the Rambam Paskins, that there are six Arroyas that are also for B'nai Noyach. 
Rabbi Eliezer, but how it's hinted in Psukim that we that we read yesterday, Al Kenyazev Ish as Al Ken Al Kenyazev Ish as Ava Vesimai, etc. We also have Psukim that are that are written in the Torah that God told Noach right after the flood, from where we also derived the Sheva Mitzvahs Bnei Noach, and many of them are repeated, like Aroyos are repeated after Matan Torah. So there are two principles. Any mitzvah that's written or hinted to in the Torah prior to Matan Torah and it's repeated again, that is a mitzvah that both Bnei Noach are chayiv and Yidin are chayiv. Any mitzvah that's not repeated, it's only written to Bnei Noach, whether explicitly, whether only merumas, only implicitly. If it's not repeated, listen to this liner, it means that from when the Torah was given forward, that's a mitzvah only for the Yidin. And we're going to speak about the Rambam's ninth principle in his Yud Gimel Ikrim. The ninth principle is, is that the Torah will never, the eternity of mitzvahs, how that's dafke to Yidin. And even though there were mitzvahs given to Goyim, some of them from Matan Torah on, Hashem removed their commandment. Wow. And then we'll have at the end of Daphne Tess amazing Agadata about Adam and Chava, how they lived in Gan Eden before the sin. We're going to learn about uh, the Tel Sabbat. He took it from somewhere. Whether he knows it or not, it's all on Daphne Tess. Okay, so let's begin. I just want to read the, begin, the, the Daphne and Chesam at base. Three lines from the bottom. So again, And why is that? Because since God said after the Mabel, Now literally, means that God is telling nature that the seasons should not stop as they stop during the Mabel. But the drasha here is no, that we are mechoyev and the will to take upon ourselves because God wants me to rest for a day. No, God wants me to work. My rest is in order for me to work better. That's not Shabbos for a Yid. We're not resting on Shabbos to work better during the week. We're resting because there is an Indian to rest. That's only uh, for the Jewish people. And V'amar Mar, that Azara Shalahem Zui Misos, and this is a very big line, the kids said, every negative commandment that God gives us in the Torah, the rule is, you're going to find it twice. You're going to find once God says, thou shall not, that's called a Hazara. Then it's going to be repeated again, sometimes with a explicit punishment, sometimes just repeat it again, but we know, you know, stamalav is malkis, there's many klolem. By B'nai Noach there is no such a thing, nothing needs to be repeated. When God says don't do it, whether implicitly, whether explicitly, that is, that is also, the, 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 in there is included, and if you'll violate it, you'll be chay of mis. Amar Avina, like we learned, Tafil Hushayne B'Shabbos, and again, there's so many different approaches, again, Rashi we learned yesterday, is saying clearly, not only connected to making a new religion. Rashi is saying that the Pasha did not allow to take in principle just L'shem mitzvahs resting, just to rest a day off. Now, Frek the Gemara, the last line, now it's big. We have this concept that there are Sheva mitzvahs b'nei noyach. Now really, we just had a Mishnah. Not everyone agrees there's Sheva. You have Tanoim that hold their eight. We're going to come back to that. But let's go to the accepted seven. If a Goy is not allowed to rest a full 25 hours throughout the week. And truth be told, again, we know that it's not going to be the same type of Chayiv Misa like the Sheva Mitzvahs. We know that. The Sheva Mitzvahs, we, when Yad Yisrael Takifa, we take them to Beisdin and they are killed Besayef. Chayiv Misa, Sheshavas, let's go with the Rambam. We only punish them makin va You translate the saif? means sword. We cut the head goes off. Ah, now, but 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 it's a mitzvah. So let it be counted. There's another mitzvah. They're not allowed to take Shabbos. Answers the Gemara. It's a mitzvah. Why is it not, why is it not counted in the seven? Ki kachashiv only sheval taisa. Think about it, Chavra. All of the Shavah mitzvahs. We're going to get to dinim in a moment. Guys, again, the, 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 the Shlomo, how do you remember the Shavah Mitzvahs? The three big ones for which he has to give his life. Then Allah Beis Gimel Dalat. The three big ones is Avoy Zara, Arroyos, even though we just quoted the Rambam, he holds that for the Goyim there are six Arroyos. We had yesterday the whole topic. We have many more Arroyos, but there's an Ingen of Arroyos. And three is murder. Allah Beis Gimel Dalat is Eber Menachai. The base is for Birchas Hashem, a euphemism, means the opposite. In English, base for blasphemy. 
Gimel is Gneva Gzela, and Dalad is Dinim. Other than Dinim, all of them are negatives. Not to serve idols, not to commit adultery, not to murder, not to steal. In other words, the sin is by doing something. Here, the sin would be by resting. Resting means not doing. That's why it's not counted. Kumvasei like a the Gemara challenges right away on Dafnun Tes. Not so quick. The seventh in the Seder that we just counted is Dinim for the Goyim to establish a judicial system. Hold on. What does that mean? How do you, how do you sin by Dinim? By not setting up a judicial system. Again, look, if you're telling me that whatever is this, if the violation is a non-action, then you should have Vav Mitzvahs B'nei Noyach. But it is counted as the seventh. So the Gemara says, Dinim has both. I'll tell you how. Of course, Goyim have to set up a judicial system. Okay? But there is a detail of that which is so important, and there's so many psukim in the Torah, not to corrupt the judgment. In other words, when you have a judicial system, but you're making an effort by doing something, you're making an effort of bribing a judge of corrupting something, that's a violation of dinim. Fashtest. And, and how do you fulfill it? You fulfill it by doing something. You break, in other words, the sin of dinim is also by bribing a judge or by doing an action. So since there is an aspect of the violation is by an action, it's counted in the Shava Mitzvah. So again, by Shabbos, the violation is by not working. Goyesha Shabbos doesn't mean he's making Kiddush. It means specifically that he's not working. That the violation is only by not doing. That's why it's not counted. Okay, now, let me add another to the mitzvahs. If he engages himself in learning Torah, he's Chayev Misa. And again, we just quoted the Rambam. Chayev Misa, based in his Makan Oisoi, Va'anshan Oisoi. And we notify him that he's Chayev Misa. Why? etc. Moirasha means it's our inheritance. It's ours. It's a Moirasha Lanu. That's the way you read it. Lanu Moirasha Veloy Lohem. And quickly quoting again in Chagiga, Yud Gimel, many of us just learned Chagiga. The Gemara there says, a din on a Jew. Ain Moisin Lohem, Ain Moisin Divritoy Laakum. Now, if the Goyim have already their own commandment not to learn Torah, so there's a concept called lifnei ever in michshol. That's the toisvus over there. It's a given. That's also for goyim. So why do we even need to have the statement ein moistin divrei toira laakum when we would not be allowed to do it because of lifnei ever? And toisvus answers, and this is a very good cloud. We have to remember that lifnei ever in michshol is only when the sinner would not be able to sin without our help. The words of Chazal is is that something not kosher. Ayid. And the, the person, and the treif is betray ivra the nahara. It's on two sides of the river. If I would not bring, if Reuven would not bring it to the yid, he would not be able to sin. Lift me even. If the sinner will have access to it anyways, even though you are helping him do it, you're not violating the biblical lift me even. Even though you are violating a rabbinic, that you're being misayeya lo ivrei aved. It's good to remember these are big klalim. But that's twice for us over here. Many times a guy, anyways, has access to Torah. Look at nowadays. So when a guy has access to it every way, there is no lifnei ivad aspect. But you should know, Chagiga, there's another specific din, ein moislim divrei Torah la'akum. Here we're not speaking about, we are not allowed to teach them. Here we're learning about, they're not allowed to learn Torah. And here, one second, the question again, why do we have Sheva Mitzvah Zmenei Noyach? Now this one, you can't give the same answer. No, it's how do they sin? By an action. Just like sinning by adultery. Just like sinning by idolatry. So this should be counted. The answer you gave above, Dafka doesn't fit over here. It's great. Answer is the Gemara. We have another Chazal that this Pasuk can be read two ways. Moirasha. Moirasha means it's our inheritance or our heritage. And the Chazal tell us it also can be read Mi'urasa, that we are married to the Torah. Now I know that in details, Eirusin doesn't mean Nesuyan and Taka. Most people are not that connected yet to the Torah that we can say that they are married. But at least 
We're like engaged. So the Gemara gives a Gavaldic answer. You know why it's not counted? Because whichever way you read the Pasik, you know why they can't learn Taira? If it's my Rasha, then if they learn it, they're stealing. It's already included in Geneva. If it's considered we are connected through marriage, through engagement, it's, it's adultery. So it's already included enough, that's why it's not counted. And here you see that the Sheva Mitzvah means categories. Anything that's shy to a category doesn't have to be further specified. Man, the Ahmed answers the Gemara that you read it the way, it's, the way we read it when we read Al Qaeda, my Russia. My Russia means it's our inheritance. So it's already included in Gazela. Migzal kol Gazala. Uman the Ahmed mi urasa. Ah. Dinoi kenara ha murasa. The beskila. Doesn't mean that they're chayif skill again. Whenever going, there's no arba misoys. By Goyim, the way you have by Eden. By Goyim, all of the Misois that Beisden has to give, or that they should give really, that they should give is all Saif. However, it just means that just like we already know that not only does marriage bring about the, the punishment of, of adultery, but even engagement brings that about. And in Echlam, by Goyim, there's no engagement. By Goyim, there's no Din engagement. That's the whole Sugis that we are learning. But by Yidin there is. And since at least it's Me'ur Rasa, so then, yeah, Dino, it cannot have Rasa the Baskil. Meisvei, Frekti Gemara, it says in Abraisa, Ho Yeramei Roimer, how can you tell me that Goy may not learn Torah? My Rav Meir constantly says, Minayin Shafil Oivet Kechavim. How do you know that if you have even a Oivet Kechavim, that's big, even someone who is uh, temporarily worshipping Avoy Dezara, yet, Voisik Batayra. Now, maybe it doesn't mean Revit Kechavim. Maybe this was from the censor. I'm thinking it can't mean Revit Kechavim. It means a goy. A goy who's Oisik Batreira, that he is like a koi and gadol. If a goy is not allowed to learn Torah, then the more Torah he learns, the greater of a sinner he is. Here, Rav Meir saw it as a positive. Shinem as it says, he's quoting a Pasuk in Achri Mois, Asher Yasser Oisim Ha'adam V'chai Bahem. Now, it says Ha'adam. It doesn't say Asher Yasser so we got a problem. No, it's, if, if, you can't say that he's violating something and becoming great through it. Before we go on, Rashi points out the following kasha that we have in other areas. The example we're giving here is by Dine Tuma. There's really a three-way machloikas tanoim, but Shitas Rashbi, that says that a goy does not give up Tumas oil, farvos, because it says, Zois, Toiras, Odom, Kiyomus, Boil, says Rabshim Barichoi, Ah, Odom, Atem, Kuroim, Odom. Atem, Tsoin, Tsoin, Marisi, he brings a Pasek Kenach. So the Rashi is asking, What's the whole Raya of Rav Meir? Because it doesn't say Koyhanim, but it says, it says over here, Ashiyasa, Oisom, Ha'odom. Ha'odom, Bechlal means Yid. So Rashi says it must be that Rav Meir doesn't accept what we just quoted B'Shei Merashbi, that Adam is only Atem, only Yidin. Toysus disagrees. Toysus, the Rabbein Otam, six lines from the top, says no, no, no. He says there is a difference between Adam and Ha'adam. Rav Meir is Moedet to Rashbi, Adam, Atem, Kuroim, Adam. Ha'adam means everyone. So you see that there's a, there's a greatness to Goyim who learn Torah answers the Gemara Hasam b'Sheva Mitzvahs did who yeah a Goy Shoisik in Sheva Mitzvahs b'Nei Noyach and and which is very broad you should know he's Kekoyin Gadol that's the Koyach of Torah but anything that is beyond the Sheva Mitzvahs b'Nei Noyach Chayev Misam okay now going back to the Mishnah the Mishnah said that Rabbi Chanin the Ben Gamliel adds another Mitzvah. To the Bnei Noyach, which is not only Aver Menachai, but also Dam Menachai, blood from a, from a live animal. So let's dive into this a little bit. Now these were quoting Pesukim here from Pashas Noyach. The Torah writes, Ach Baser Benafshoi, Domoi Loisoi Chelu, that but flesh with its soul. What's that? What's the soul? That is, that, which is the blood you shall not eat, says the Chachamim. Yeah, that goes to Aver Menachai. That's the meaning of it. In other words, Goyim were allowed from now on to kill and to eat, but they have to do it in that order, and not to take a limb off a living animal. And furthermore, even if a limb fell off on its own, you were not cruel. 
can't eat a limb that came off the animal when the animal was alive. And Rab Hanina adds, Rab Hanina ben Gamliel Oimer, no, 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 af hadam en achai, for b'nei noyach. And the Gemara goes on, my tama de Rab Hanina ben Gamliel, because he breaks the Pasik into two, you can read it, al pidrashem, making it into two different isurim. He reads like this, kribei, basar ben afshe iloi soichel, one din, and, and, versteis, domi ben afshe iloi soichel. And all of that is because the word dam should not have been written. I mean, no, no, that's Rab Hanina ben Gamliel. If the Torah is only speaking about basar, so write, ach basar ben nafshe loy seichelum. Dama is extra. It means two different isurim. And the Rabbanan. So taka, what did the Rabbanan do with the words dammai? Hahu, we'll see this, now we'll see this on Ahmed Beis. Lemishrei shirat samudah asam. In other words, if there is a limb, goyim can eat shirat when they're dead, one might have thought that, you, that if a limb fell off a sheretz, when the sheretz is alive, that should be included in the isur of Ever Menachai, but it's not. How do they know it from? From the word Damai. And the Gemara speaks out that creatures who we can recognize that there's a separation between its flesh and its blood, which is on all animals. That is where, not the Torah's aciding Ever Menachai, but, but, but animals whose blood and flesh appear to be one. By a sheretz, it's like one thing. They're not included in this Pasuk. And there's a similar machloikis, whether a Pasuk that's speaking primarily about Eber Menachai could be broken into two and also be hinting to the din of Dam. Now this Pasuk is in Parsha Sre'e, that's about Yidin. The Torah says, now here the explicit fakert is about Dam. Torah says, Rak chazak, levilti achoyl hadam, ki hadam hu nefesh. And by the way, the Torah writes, in the Hemshech HaPasek, right, shukri loy soichal, ha nefesh im ha basar. Oh, so, oh, so say, let's go with the parentheses if we read it. So the, the, the one Tana holds, Rak chazak, levilti achoyl hadam, that one liner refers to Eivin Menachai. Same, we're breaking it into two. Ki hadam hu nefesh, that's dam hachai. The Rabbanon don't agree with Rab Hanino. Blood is not included in the Isser. Now, make no mistake. Blood by a Yid, Chayef Kodes. We know that. We just want to know whether it's included in this verse. They don't agree that it's included in this verse. The Rabbanon, Hahu, the reason why the Torah mentions Dam in this Pasik is not to include Dam in the Isser of this Pasik, but it's to clarify what Dam is Asur. We already know that Dam for a Yid is Asur. There are many Psukim. Isar Kodes, one might have thought that you know, you know what dam may a Jew not eat? Dam that left the animal while the animal was dying, while the animal was slaughtered. What happens if the animal is healthy? For example, your bloodletting. That's what the Pasuk is saying. But how much dam? It's not stam a scratch. The dam, even though the animal is not dying, but it's Shahana Shama, boy, that is included here in the Pasuk. But not the general Isur Dam, which is not included in this Pasik. Okay. Coming back to our sugya. So what did we just establish? We just had two Psukim. Clearly, right? Mirumas. We have a Pasik in Noyach, we have a Pasik in the A. Lokula Alma, my friends, they both prohibit Aver Menachai. So I have a simple question. Again, this is based on the premise that all of us had a din of Bnei Noyach prior to the giving of the Torah. So when God told Noyach, for sure, don't eat Eivim Menachai, maybe Dam, maybe not Dam, don't eat Eivim Menachai. We were already bound by it, meaning our grandparents. Then comes the Matan Torah. Why does Hashem have to give an A another Pasik telling us that we don't eat Eivim Menachai? Anyways, we were not allowed to eat Eivim Menachai. That's the question. This is ground zero for this topic. And the response to this question is the two principles. There are two principles, and both of them we'll discuss. Let's chaparain over here. This is beautiful. So the Gemara answers, Principle number one. For example, Eivim Menachai. You know why it was repeated? Because leze u leze nemra. It means that even after the Torah was given, the Bnei Noyach is still obligated, they're still bound with that prohibition. However, if you find in the Pasuk something that was given, Le Bnei Noyach, but the Loi Nishneis means repeated. It was not repeated, Besinai. 
the example will be Gid Hanoshe. It means Li Yisrael Nemro. V'loy Noach. Wow. Rashi. Rashi. Li Yisrael Nemro V'loy Noach means it was given to B'nai Noach. But when Sinai came about, from then on, they're no longer bound by it. And, and exactly, and the Gemara says, Guys, we're going to have in Chulun Daf Kuf Amid Beis a big machloikas when you read in Parshas Vayishlach. In Parshas Vayishlach, Alkein lo yechru b'nei Yisrael es agid anasha, etc., etc. Ada yoyim azeh. The Chachamim hold that that pasuk was ne- was not given at that time historically. It's amazing. The Chachamim hold that when Hashem gave the Torah to Moshe and Sinai, since Yidden are commanded not to eat the gid anasha, Hashem told Moshe to put that isur. In the, in the story. It was never given Le B'nai Noach. Rabbi Yehuda disagrees. Rabbi Yehuda says, no, 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 no. When, when the story happened and when Yaakov was limping, the Oivishter said then, don't eat. Eloma, that's the word. And by then, even though, again, it was given to Yaakov and then to his children, but they had a din of B'nai Noach. Le Rabbi Yehuda, it was given to all of the B'nai Noach. When Hashem gave us the Torah, God added the words, Lo Yechru B'nai Yisro, to make it clear that from now on, from now on, the Yisro is only on B'nai Yisro. Ah, Omar Mar, now let's go back into each one of these principles. Kol Mitzvah Shonem Elo Bnei Noyach, and V'nishnei B'Sinai. You know why God repeated it? That's the whole Kasha. Why did God repeat Eber Menachai? Leave it. No, because if God would not have repeated it, you know what? We would have misunderstood. We would have misunderstood to think that from Sinai on, only Libanei Yisrael, also Eve Menachai. Has to be repeated. What kind of logic is that? Adarabo. Adarabo. Why don't we say, think about it, Taka, that me, the Nishnah, is B'Sinai, anything that God repeated, why did he have to repeat it? He had to repeat it to say that from now on, only Eden. You can say the opposite. Only Li Yisrael Nemra. V'loy Libanei Noyach. No, leave it the way it is. If if we're saying the logic that we are, we you know it's we're bnei noach plus. So anything that we're usher to keep, if it's going to be for bnei noach and for the yidden, leave it. Answers the gemara. No, I know it's not the case. And he gives a great example. We know from stories in Nach that goyim were punished because they engaged in avodah zara. Even after the Torah was given, we know this from the chumash also. From, from, you know, from scripture and, and Avoid Zara was repeated so we know that something that was repeated Lebanai Yisrael doesn't mean that since it was repeated it excludes them Dafkanat me the Isnei Avoid Eskichavim B'Sinai since Avoid was repeated and we know the Ashkech and the Anash Oiv Dekechavim Ilava Shema Mino that that's the Pshat anything that is repeated by Sinai to the Eden means that the Isr that God gave to the Bnei Noyach continues. And then there was another Isr to the Bnei Yisrael. Where is Avodis Tuchavim mentioned before? So that, oh, where is that? We just learned. No, so we had all these Pesukim. That was a Sugi before. We're, we're, we're learning now, a complementing a few daf that we missed. So we had many sources. Both, both in, in, to Adam and to Noyach. There's a few Pesukim. To Adam there was only six mitzvahs. To Noach, there's the seventh additional, but all of the six were repeated as well, and they're all the rumors in the Psukim in the beginning of the Chumash and Parshas Noach. Okay. Says the now, principle number two, So, what is the Pshat? It's amazing. God gives a mitzvah, it's written to B'nai Noach. If it's not repeated, no, it's all the Shema mitzvahs are written. I just met. It's not just Pruravu and all the Merumas. If, if they are not repeated, it means that from now on, only the Yisrael Nehmer B'lei Le'enoich. Here again, the Gemara says logical. Adarabah. If it's not repeated by Sinai, why don't we say the opposite? That it only remains also Le'enoich. Le if God didn't repeat it to the Yidin, then the Yidin are not bound by it. So the Gemara says that can be. It can be that there's something that... That, that is asur for a goy, that is mutter for a yid. Isur comes because of kedusha. So, lekom midam. There can't be anything that the Yisrael shari, uloy of the gachavim asur. If it's asur le noyach, it's asur for a yid. Uazoy, two challenges against that. Number one, the din of a yefas toyer. Under very limited circumstances during a war, a yid is allowed to take 
a Yafas Toyer, she might be married. A Goy is not allowed to do that. Here you find something that is muttered to a Yid and Asr to a Goy. So the Gemara gives a technical answer. If the Goyim would have had the halachic power of conquest, during conquest, everyone would be permitted in a Yafas Toyer. The reason why Goyim don't have such a hatred is because halachically, when they engage in battle, halachically they're not called conquerors. Let her go hear this. No. Oh, hasa mishum delavene kibush nino. This halachic, this is a halachic concept. Uh, this is very. You have no idea how important it is because according to our Gemara, the whole sugi of kedusha rishayna kitchel ashaicha kitchel asad lavi, and bchal throughout shas, we normally accept that the kedusha that was imbued in the land of Israel through kibush yehoshua was removed when Nebuchadnezzar destroyed the Holy Land. And then, when we entered under Ezra, we made another type of Chazaka type of connection, and the Chazaka remained. But according to our Gemara, no, according to our Gemara, if Goyim don't have the halachic power of Kibush, then Nebuchadnezzar, even though he, to our eyes, he kicked us out of Israel, but he was not Koivish at its Yisrael. They don't have a din of, of Koivish. They're not conquerors halachically. Oh, it's this Lechayda would follow the opinions that hold that the Kedusha that was imbued in the land by Yeshua remains forever. Let's go right. Next question is, Farei Pachos Mishava Pruta. Well, you're telling me a principle. that Nothing that's usher to a Yid, that's uh, uh, usher to a Goy, that's mutter to a Yid. It's not true. If a Goy steals less than a Pruta, it's Chayiv Misa Besayiv. If a Jew steals less than a Pruta, no punishment. So the Gemara answers, Hasa Mishum Dalav Benei Mechil Really, it's the same. Eloma, when Yidin Arachmanim. That's what Rashi writes over here. And therefore, they're Moichel. It's connected to Rachmanus. So if someone stole from me less than a pruta, I'm Moichel. Since I, I forgave, I'm forgiving, that's why the Ganeth, the Gazlin, won't be punished, at least not in a basin. Masha Enki and the Goyim, they don't have the Midah of Rachmanus, Adarabo, Achzorius. So they're not Moichel, but the principle is the same, that you're liable for Gezela. All right, furthermore, let's go back on this, on this principle that what? Kol mitzvah shenemad alivnei noich. If it's repeated on Sinai, what does that mean? It means that they're both bound by it. All the Sheva mitzvahs b'nei noich were written, merumas, shuki, and they are repeated. Now we're going to have another two bomb questions. Frekti gemara veharei dafnun tesam et beiz milam. We are learning this Bashgacha Pratas, Tafshan Pei Beis, Parshas Tazriya. Parshas Tazriya says, That's, That should be a classical example. And this is not a remez of the Sheva Mitzvahs. Where do you find Sheva This is Befedish and Parshas Lech Lecha. It's very uh, spelled out, clearly spelled out. Go, uh, uh, again, based on the premise that all of the people, including the Avois and the Shvatim, had a din of a Benoyach. Or they had the din of Bnei Noach. Had a mila nemro of Bnei Noach. Dixiv, as it says, quoting a pasuk in Lech Lecha, "Va'atos brisi tishmoir v'nishnes brisi na in parshas tazri or byer mashmini yimor." Yet we know that only Le Yisrael nemro v'loy le Bnei Noach. Why don't we say that goyim have an obligation to do it? We don't say that. Doesn't this disprove this uh, principle? Answers the Gemara, the repetition that was given in Tazriah is not to introduce a din, Adarabo. It's to give you a heter, it's to give you a scenario in which prior to this passage you would not know what to do. And that is what happens if the eighth day is on Shabbos. So Dafka, because he didn't were commanded to keep Shabbos. We're not allowed to draw blood on Shabbos. That's all, let's say it's connected to uh, Shechita. So one might have thought that you may not do a bris on Shabbos, so the Torah needed to repeat, Ubayoy mashmini, ubayoy mi kol makayim. Ubayoy mafilo b'Shabbos. Ha'hu, ha'hu l'mishle Shabbos u da'aseh. Beyom mafilo b'Shabbos. But it's not called a repetition. If the Torah would have repeated the whole mitzvah anew, then we would have said that goyim are obligated to it also. Next question is pity of erivya. Shnev ralevedei noyach. Where do you have this to b'nei noyach? Va'atem pru uravu. One second, where do you have, this is a good question, a commandment to procreate after Sinai. So the link is, is that it says, B'Sinai, Leich, Sparsha's voice, Hanan, Emoir Lohem, Shuvu Lohem, Li'oha Leichem. Go return to your tents, means go and be with your wives. 
Yet, the rule is that the obligation of Tru Ravu is only Li Yisrael and not to B'nai Noyach. With a lot of Allah consequences. But why not? It's Nemra, Venishna. They should be Metsuva now. They are obligated in a Pasuk in Divre Kabbalah, Loy Lotoyu Vera'a Elo Lashavis Yitzara, which is always quoted in the Sugya of Chatsi Evan, Chatsi Ben Choyren, right? Even though Basilil held. That you know, one day, over the Sraba Yemechad, Ves Atzma Yemechad, the Shami tells him, Tekantem es Atzma, Tekantem es Rabbi, Ves Atzma, Eloi Tekantem, because of Lushevis Yitzara. There's no Pruravu by Goyim. Why not? It's, repeat, it's repeated. So the Gemara gives a Gewaldic answer also. No, the Pasik that you, Lech Emor Lohem, Shuvah Lohem, Li Ohalechem, was not a commandment to have children. The opposite. Being that we wanted to hear the commandments directly from God. We asked for that. So Hashem added not only the mitzvah of Hagbalah, but the mitzvah of Perisha, that was the add-on. The mitzvah of Perisha means that God told us you may not be with your wives for three days. Once God prohibited something, even though He gave the reason, it's because we didn't want to have Tumas Kedi. But the rule is that once you make Exeda, to undo it, it's not enough to say the reason is inapplicable. Right, you can't have medicine on Shabbos mid because shchika samamanim. No, no one today, if they have a headache, no one is going to grind herbs. They're going to go to the CVS. True, but the rule is that since it was a rule enacted even by a rabbinic b'minyan, you need to have another enactment to undo it. Same thing with God. If God would not have told us, then we would not be allowed to be with our wives. So it was given to us to be matir. It, it's not a mitzvah. Gavaldik. You can argue that all of, let's say, arroyos, and we just quoted in the beginning of today's, you know, we quoted the Ramam. The Ramam holds that the Goyim only have six arroyos. He didn't have 21 arroyos. Go learn your vamas, you'll see how many arroyos. And many details, even in every erva, there's many nuance, there's differences. There's Shalei Kedarka, there's Kedarka, we even touched upon that yesterday. There's a Kula that Goyim have, right? We just learned that, that if a Goyim is boil, Eshes Chaveda, Shalei Kedarka, he's not Chayiv Misa. By a Yid, no such Shetan. So why don't we argue that they were never repeated? Don't tell me that they were, they were given to Bnei Noach and they were, they were not repeated, they were repeated for a detail. Just like you're giving this thing by you, like uh, Bris was a detail, the Gemara says, not true. That the Sheva Mitzvahs were not repeated with a the detail. They were mamish. The trader says, Thou shalt not. Thou shalt not is the big Hazara. Not only a detail. By a bris, it's a detail. By Yom Hashmini. I get that. By Pruravu, it's a matter. But by the other Sheva Mitzvahs, the trader repeats a brand new Hazara. That's called a repetition. And says, The trader repeats, Thou shalt not by Arois. And that, why is it needed? You know, the answer is to make it clear that even though God gave these commandments to Yidin, the mitzvahs that God gave to the Goyim still remains. Okay, so what mitzvah that was given to the Goyim was not repeated for the Yidin? Gid Hanosha. As we learned in Amadal, the Ein Lanu Ela, Gid Hanosha Blavad, according to Rabbi Yehuda, because according to the Chachamim, Chul and Dav Kuf, the, the, God never, never told the Bidnei Noich not to eat Gid Hanosha. The Pasuk was just put in the wrong place, or put in the right place, put in the story. But according to Rabbi Yehuda, God told Yaakov then not to eat Giranosh. Since it's not repeated, God told Moshe to add the words Bnei Yisrael, because it's not repeated, because Mikan Ula Halon. Guys, the ninth principle in the Rambam's 13 principles is that the t- mitzvahs will never change. And we know we learn in Hasidus, so many my modem, that there are Chazals that say that La'asad Lavi mitzvahs will be Betelois. And, the, the, and clearly not, not to be taken literally. A Hasidus explains, or Yom Tovim will be bottle, or a side of Purim. They explain that, for example, every Yom Tov brings about a, a Gilui of godliness. So there's going to be so much light of godliness in the world that a Yom Tov will be, that's the words in Hasidus, Kishraga Betihara. It's like if it's the middle of the day and you light a candle, no one notices the additional light. But the mitzvah, that's the principle in the Rambam, a, a mitzvah, that's the Goyim went off with that. They said that there's a new covenant, God forbid. That we say regarding Mashiach is a deeper understanding of the Torah. A, a greater gilui, but there will be, there'll be no change. That's a Jewish thing. Mitzvahs never change. That's important. There were mitzvahs that were given to Goyim 
according to Rabbi Gita Nosh, and it changed. God says, no more. So when they go ahead and they say that God ch it changed the rules, they're speaking Lashitasam. But it's all based on, the, on, on their lack of acceptance of the fundamental separation between Yidin and Goyim. We're different in this sense. That anything, any connection that we have with God by default is essential and therefore God doesn't change, it will never change. The mitzvahs will never change. The mitzvahs that God gave to the Goyim changed. Hold on. Here's a problem. Bris and procreation were not repeated. Why did the Braisa only mention Gedanosha? We just said Bris was given to Avram and Takal Goim don't have Bris. We just said that. Pruravu was given to Bnei Noyach and from the Torah on, yeah, there's a Lashavas Yitzada, but there's no Pruravu. So why does the Braisa only mention Gedanosha? Answers the Gebara. Hani Isnei Lishu Milsna Ba'alma. You're right. Be'emes, there are three mitzvahs that Goyim had and they lost. Be'emes. Gidan Asher, Prudavu and Bris. But since the Torah did mention it again, the Torah mentioned Bris for the detail by Yom Hashemini. The Torah mentioned Prudavu to be Mater. Gidan Asher is never mentioned again. That's the word. Ha lo isneklau. It's the only one that's mamish not mentioned. And, but the rule is the same. Since it's not mentioned again, it means that Goyim were obligated in Gidan Asher only up until Maimed Har Sinai. Now this answer is specifically regarding, regarding Bris Mila, the premise of a Bris Mila was a mitzvah to the Goyim. It's, it, it, we held to all the Goyim. Elama, from Sinai on, since it wasn't repeated, only for the Yidin. This Gemara is saying, the second to last narrow line, it's not true. That it was never given to all the Goyim. That Bris Mila may cut it was only Lavram who the Kamiza Le Rachman. How do we know that? Going back to the Pasik and Lechlach of Atta, head of the first white line, as Birisi Tishmoin. Atta Vizaracha, Harecha Lede Roysom. Meaning Atta Vizaracha. In, in a Shachrini, Loi. So this is not a good example. This is not a good example. It was never given to all the Bene Noyach. Now the problem is, if God only meant to Avram Avinu, Elama Atta, Bene Yishmol, they should be Chayev. It's interesting. You can say, maybe they're chayv, they're not chayv. We know they're not chayv. But God attacked only to Avram. But he told him, Ato v'zaracha acharecha. So the Gemara answers, no, no, in Vayera, in Vayera, the Torah says, ki bi yitzchak l'kar l'cha zara. So, uh, yeah, it says, Ato v'zaracha. But who is zaracha? Yitzchak. We have one more kasha. What about Esav? See, Esav is from Yitzchak. So at least, b'nei Esav l'chayvu. So the Gemara is Medayik, it says, Be Yitzchak, in Yitzchak. And here the Drasha is part of Yitzchak. Part of Yitzchak is Davka Yaakov. Be Yitzchak, like all Yitzchak. Frek, the Gemara, we're not done yet. Mask of the Rab Oishia, Eloma Ato, B'nei Ketura, Avram Avinu, after Sarah passes away. Avram Avinu marries Ketura. We have in the Chumash, he had with her another six sons. That's after Yishmol. Be Yitzchak was to exclude Yishmol. He was there. But the B'nei Ketura that were born afterwards, Lechoura, they were not excluded from the base of the Be'yitzchak. So they should be obligated. And again, who says they're not? But the premises they're not. So, Indeed, oh, Hold on. First of all, another Pasuk we have over here in Lech Lecha. God was telling Avram Avinu that if you will not circumcise your children, but Rashi adds, yeah, Avram Avinu was mechuyev to circumcise those six sons, but it didn't go on. In other words, it was an obligation on the father. And Taka, they needed to be circumcised. But their children were not included in that. So again, we're standing with the bris mila is different. Bris mila was only given. Now, even though Avram Avinu were going in our sugya, had a din of a ben noyach, it doesn't matter. But it was only the zaracha of Avram which are our grandparents. It was always connected to the Yidin, with the one exception that Bnei Keturah, the six sons, were... Well, by the way, Yishmael also had a bris. The Torah says, Avram Avinu circumcised Yishmael. But not anyone after. There was no obligation. Same thing with Bnei Keturah. He also circumcised all the people. He, that's Avadim. That's different. Avadim is different. That's his possessions. Omar, Rav Yehuda, Omar, Rav. Let's, have, let's go back. To the sugya of Aver Menachai, Adamari Shoyin Lehutalei Basel Achilon. How do I know that he was not allowed? Because since it says right, how does the pasuk go? Vayemer Alekim Hini Nasati Lachem Es Kol Esev Zoyrei Azera, etc. Lachem Yelo Achlo 
you have to if you open up a chumash, these gemaras come to life. The next pasuk begins a lochol chayis aretz, I think. But the drushes are putting it together. No, it's the grass is to be for you a lochol chayis aretz, but not the other way around. V'loy chayis aretz lochem. I just want to quickly quote again. We just learned this on Daf Nun Vav Amid Beis. What does what does Toisvus write? I, I hope we spoke it out when we learned it a few Daf ago. That 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 you asked the question, Shuki, like where's the Remes? The, the Gemara says over there, Ochel Toichel means Veloy Every Menachai. Ochel Toichel Veloy Every Menachai. So the Gemara wants to know that uh, that that other Marishan was not allowed to eat meat at all. But Toisvus writes that other Marishan, we just quoted this also. I think it was yesterday, two days ago. Other Marishan was not allowed to kill to eat meat. If an animal died, he was allowed to eat it. Just to make that clear. However, when an animal dies, it's disgusting to eat the meat. So, Bepoil, they didn't eat the meat. Just to, that, just to remember Shita's choices. But coming back over here, when we speak about the general, Eve Manachai was not given to Adam because he was Bechlal, not allowed to eat meat. Let me find a place again. Um, however, Uchshabo b'nei Noyach, Hitr Lahem. Shinamar as it says, Ki Yerek Esav Nosati Lachem Es. Coil, what's main coil? I gave to you, but every, everything means even meat. Yachol lo yehi even menachai noig boy. So you would think, right, that he can't have, that he can even have even menachai, that there won't be the iser of even menachai because God says I give you everything. That's why it says we quoted the Salam Adalaf. No ach baser benafshi domei lo yisechelu. You can't have even menachai. Yachol afle shiratzim. Is the Isur of Eve Menachai also on a limb of a Sheretz? Talmud Leimer, Ach! And therefore it doesn't go to Shiratzim. How do you know it from Ach? We had the son of Ad Aleph, Amar Afuna, because of the word Dhammai. The word Dhammai is extra. That's Taka Wai Chavar Rabchanina, but Amgam Liel holds, you remember? That Dhammai is to add another Isur of Dham. The Chachamim Old, no Dhammai. Me Shadami Chalik Mibsarai, if blood is distinct from the flesh. Now, how do you define distinct? That's always, the Chazal understood it's distinct. That on that category is where you have the Isra of Eve Menachai. Yotzu Shiratzim. That from our perception, al Toira, the blood and the flesh of a Sheretz look like one gooey thing. You don't see flesh and blood. It's not included in the Isur. Cholok Mipsodim, they're not included. And yes, a Bnei Noyach can eat a, a Eved. The Chinese are experts in this. Now, they're not a lot of torture. They're, they violate that. But they have no problem eating. If you go to the markets over there in Hong Kong, Mamish, a Shiratzim, while they are, they eat it, they eat a shtickel sheretz. And the people pay for it. Okay, go figure. Meisvei. Okay, the kash is on Avid, right? It, it says in Abraisa regarding Adam, Uradu bedigas hayom, God told Adam and Chava and Kayin and Hevel v'chule, you should dominate, you should have dominium over the digas hayom. The guys, the digas hayom is flesh. You're telling me that until the flood, Adam and Chava were only allowed to eat Esav Asada, they were vegetarians. So my love, that part of ruling over means that you can eat it. So the Gemara says no, that they had the right to use fish, Lamalacha. The Gemara asks, fish can be harnessed, Lamalacha? Yeah, in. How do we know that? Alts from Torah. Kedar Achava. The boy, Achava. We have a Pasuk and Parshish Kiseitze. Chava, we all know this. That what? That Lo Yisachrosh B'Shor V'Chamor Yachtov. So they wanted to know what happens if a person harnesses a plow to a goat and to the shibuta fish. In other words, you have a field right near the water. The fact, now we're not going into the answer. You see from the question that you can harness a plow to a fish, big fish, let the fish go and it's going to schlep the plow. So that, who gave you right to do it? That's Urdu with the gasayam, not to eat it, but to use it. Since he asked the question, Hinik be butamai is araya that you can use fish for work. Tashima, when it says again, this is psukim by imbereshes. God told other Mauritian that Uridgu, including Uba Oif Hashemayim. My love, that he had the right to rule, ruling over should also include eating. No. Ruling over means that we have the right to harness the koyach of the birds, they should work for us. Yes. From another boy, boy, boy um, Rabba Barafuna. Here we're speaking about the love of not muzzling an animal when it threshes. So you have a sheet of Rabbi Yisib, Rabbi Yehuda, Chevra Shloima, that is mashma, that you know who may not be muzzled, an animal that's walking on four. 
So therefore the question is, what happens if you're using birds, dosh ba'avaz and v'tana goylem, if you're threshing with geese or with chickens, these are gesunte chickens. You know, they have to be big enough to, to be able to break the klipa. Okay, so he wanted to know, well, Rabbi Yehuda, could you muzzle the, the goose? Could you not muzzle the goose? He's just proving from questions they asked in the yeshiva that you see that you can harness birds to work. Who gave you the right to do it? That's Uridgu, Ubo Eif Hashemayim. But not Lachilo. Adam Arishan was not given the right to kill animals to eat them. Oh, the Tanya, Rab Shimon ben Menasio Oime. Oh, I'm sorry. Toshema, thank you. It says, again, these are all Psukim from Bereshis. Ubachol, Chaya, Hadri, Messes, Allah, Oretz. Again, he's ruling over all of the animals that creep on the earth. Does that not also mean that we have the right to kill it, to eat it? No, it doesn't. Hahu lasuya nachash uda asa. Chavad the Oibishter created the nachash prior to the sin. We're going with many chazals as it's mashma from the Pshuta Shal Mikra that the nachash was able to speak. The nachash was like a zamemutza between mankind and, and all of the other animals in the world. And not only did it walk on two feet, it spoke, which means it was intelligent. And this ideal was that God wants for every human being to have two nechashim to serve that person. Mikan, by, by Elon Musk, what is he called? The, the Telsa Bat. Sheikh will come, everyone will have two robots. Two, not one. That's the nachash. There was a nachash. And, and in other words, and they were work. It's all about that God gave us the right to use all of the world to be in our service, but not to eat everything. That's the difference. We can work with the fish, we can work with them, we can dominate alcohol, remes, haremeses. It referred to the nachash. As we learned, the Tanya, Rab Shimon, and Asya Oimer, chaval, what a chaval, what a pity that we lost. Al shamish gadol. There was a great shamish that every person would have had. We'll see, not one, two. That sha'avad min oilam. Oven in oil because of the failing of Adam and Chava with the Chet Eitz Adas. She'il molei loy neskal al nachash. Actually, from the sin of the Nachash. In other words, we're blaming the Nachash. Every Yid. Means even before there were Nachashim Loy Toivim. There were Nachashim Toivim. Every Yid would have been given two good Nachashim. And Echad Meshagre Lutzafin, the Echad Meshagre Lutzafin. The Marshal writes, Gavaldik, he writes, what's up north and south? Why not east and west? Because east and west today are places where mankind can travel to. North and South, the North Pole and the South Pole. It's freezing, or the South, it's Miami, it's Gehenna hot, it's hot. In other words, they would have been used to go to places where we are uncomfortable to go, and they would do work for us. And, and what would they go there for? Lahavile, they would bring to the person san, sandal boinim toivim. Sandal boinim mashma a precious uh, metal or a precious stone. It means we would have these, these uh, today we have machines, but it was chaval, we would have it in nature. And not only would they be in our service to go to faraway missions, but they would also be domesticated robots. They would somehow tie on. They would attach a strap under their tails. They had tails, nechashim. They had tails, they have tails now, but they had feet. So, you know, it looked like a tail. They were experts in understanding what soil is good to plant what. And by the way, even after they were cursed, what do they eat? They eat, uh, they eat the offer. In other words, they, they would be the ones determining for us, that, and they would not schlep the earth. It sounds like they didn't have hands, but we would tie on to their tails some sort of... Uh, Device and when they would walk from here to there, they would schlep, they would schlep the hard work items from one place to the other. All of that, all of that is just an answer that the Nechashim, no creature was given over to mankind until the flood that we have, should have the right to kill them to eat them. Dominating means that we had the right to make everything in the world be in our service. Meisve, it says in Abraisa, Oho, Yerabi, Yehuda, Ben Tema, Oimer. He was reclining in Gan Eden. And you had angels that were tzoylenly basar. The angels were working the barbecue. All of you guys are malachi yashares. Because it's a big avoid. It's very, even in LA with the beautiful weather. So they had malachi yashares that they were serving Adam. What were they doing? They were roasting meat. Here's the kasha. If we, if we were not allowed to eat meat, how was he eating meat? But let's, ooh, misan and layayin, they were straining the wine. <coughs> and what happened was, hits is by nachash. The nachash took one glance and he saw the way Adam and Chava had it so good. 
He was Makana. Okay. And that's what led that, just explaining why did the Nachash do what he did. So it wasn't just that he lost it after Chava, he had as a envy in the, um, in the, uh, what's it? Lifestyle. In the lifestyle of Adam. So what you see, Tzoylon Basar, look at the Gemara's answer. Yeah? Meat was not meat from earth. Hasam bebasar hayoyred min ha-shomayim. Meat that's yoyred min ha-shomayim, that we were allowed to eat. Afrayti Gemara, mi ika basar hayoyred min ha-shomayim. That's a very un unusual question. We just learned the met. We just learned the brayse. Yeah, another brayse. In kihad the rabshim ben chalafta. It happened even in the times of the tanoi. Kavak azal beurcha. He was once going on a trip, and pagabli hanach ar yavasa. He met a group of lions, and the group of lions they were hungry. The havak the havak ape. They were roaring at him. So what did he do? He davened. He said he quoted the pasuk and tell him hakfirim. Kfirim are young lions. Shoy agim la taref. Who knows the hemshech apasik? I think it's levakesh keil achlam. In other words, they're roaring. They want meat. He was telling God they want to eat, and he also added parenthetically, and I don't want to be their meal. So what happened? Nachisu leitarte atmasa. Two slabs of meat appeared. It fell from the heavens. You know how good it was. God gave so much meat. One of them they ate. Chad achlua. Four lines from the bottom. And the other one, they walked away. So now, right, the Tana of Shemar Chalafta has a good uh, steak. But he didn't know whether it's kosher or not. So he brought it to the base Medrash. The Chad Shafko, they left one. So I say, Va'asal Abay Midrash, and Boy Yalei, he asked, Dover Tomei Yuzeh, Oi Dover Tahar? So they answered, No, no, no. Ain Dover Tomei Yoyed Min Hashemayim. Eskazun Tehit. And they tell Chadayim over there. All of that is a raya, and you need this. This is now we're good. Now we're good. So other Marishan was soilin the Malachi Asharis, that's not a problem. Meet me yeah, not meat from the earth. Well, one more line. Boy, me neirab zeirem erab abo. You're telling me as a rule that anything that comes from the heaven is taught. What happens if what appears to be the, the, the flesh of a chamoir falls from the heaven? Can you eat it? Can you not eat it? Yorda loy demus chamoir. Not speaking about a living chamoir. We're speaking about already a piece of meat, but you see it's from a chamoir. And they got upset at his question. So they responded to Rabzeira. Rabbo tells Rabzeira, Yorud Nala. You want, Yorud is a type of bird that is always wailing. Like when someone makes a lot of noise, they call them a Yorud Nala. It's a little bit of a sharp of art. You demented Yorud. We had the here Rosh Hashiv in LA that sometimes quotes Chazals like this. Ha, Amri Lei. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're saying. Ein Dover Tome Yorud Men just like, just like we say that if something that to us is experienced as ra, that on some level, I know this is a, theoretically, it's nice to say it, if someone is suffering, don't tell it to them at that moment, it's very hard to be it, but it's all good, even if it appears bad. Say the kudet. Yeah, ain dover tama yered men ha-shamayim. It, it will fall. It's going to look like chamor. It's like something that looks bad, but it's not a chamor, or it's not asur. Ain't over tami yerem hashemayim. Nakuda will be. Bottom line is, uh, including toisvus. Yeah, he was allowed to eat meat that died naturally. No one did that, but the heter of eating meat was given to Noach to kill to eat meat, and God repeated to Noach beremes as we learned today the pesukim and Noach that he may not eat aver menachai, and according to Rab Chanina. But I'm Gamliel, not even dumb, Menachai to be continued.